Today we're making a bench out of concrete and cedar 2x6s. I'm going to be hosting a lot of outdoor events at my new properties and I wanted a way to quickly set up some seating. I made some concrete cylinders with a notch in the top so that the wood pieces can fit right in. The 7 foot version looks great so we decided to see how far we could take this idea without adding a third support by trying out a 20 foot long bench. But let's get right to the making. This is a super easy project that can be built with just a few basic power tools. I'm using 5 gallon buckets to mold the concrete. The supports that go under the top of the bench are from 2x6's that I cut down to just 2.5 inches wide. I cut two short pieces that will fit inside the bottom of the bucket. I use my orbital sander to round over the ends to ensure a nice snug fit. I screwed the two pieces together and now I have a block that will make the negative space in the bucket. I don't want the fit to be too tight, so I wrap the blocks with some scrap linoleum. It's about an eighth of an inch thick and concrete doesn't stick to it. If you don't have linoleum lying around, you could use bubble wrap or an old piece of yoga mat to create the thickness and duct tape on top so that the concrete doesn't stick. Once I had the block nicely wrapped, I just drove some panhead screws through the bucket and into the block to secure it. Pretty much any concrete mix will work for this project. I typically use Quickcrete 5000. It's a little bit stronger at 5000 PSI than typical concrete and the color is a nice consistent gray. I added water and mixed it until it was the consistency of lumpy oatmeal and I used my hammer drill to vibrate the board it was sitting on which helps remove some of the bubbles. I don't need this base to be solid concrete and that's a lot of weight so I filled an old paint can full of dirt and then used a board and a weight to hold that down while the concrete cured just so the bucket doesn't float back up. I let the concrete cure for two days and start scooping out the dirt <laughs> before just dumping it out. Removing the bucket is the part of the project where I put the least amount of thought into and if I would have been a little more strategic about this I probably could have used the same bucket for both concrete molds. As it is though I've had great success melting down this type of plastic. I made a guitar out of it before so don't worry these cut up buckets will get used for something else. Bubble wrap or yoga mat which is a little bit spongy would have made removing the wood a lot easier. It's not that the concrete's sticking it's just that everything's wedged in so tight whereas a spongy material wrapped around the outside gives you a little room to push against and then slowly wiggle the wood out. But it really didn't take me that long to just drill a bunch of holes and hack at it with a chisel and, and once I removed the majority of the wood the linoleum peeled right out. I am though seriously investigating the process of making inflatable molds. I really like the idea of blowing air into something, putting the concrete on it, and then just deflating it and pulling it out. I often find that ripping down super long boards is easier to do with a circular saw than it is a table saw. I had these 20 foot long cedar 2x6s. They are a little weather worn since they had been sitting outside. And I just clamped one on top of another to use as a straight edge guide so I could rip the whole length with my circular saw. What I like about this design is that it can be made with just three basic power tools, a drill, circular saw, and orbital sander. Right now just happens to be a great time to buy the power tools that I use, Ryobi Days. If you buy two batteries for $99, you get a free power tool. I'll put a link to that in the description, but shout out to Ryobi. After ripping down these two 20 foot long pieces to two and a half inches wide, I use my Craig Mini pocket hole jig to drill a bunch of angled holes that will allow me to attach the support rails to the underside of the bench top. I trimmed off about two inches on each end of the supports. I don't really need the full length and the ends were a little beaten up. I also added a little 45 degree angle just for aesthetics. This bench is going outside so I didn't go too crazy with the sanding. I just did a quick once over with 120 grit paper. My boards had some split ends. So I just dropped in some Type Bond Type 3 wood glue. It's the waterproof version. And then just drilled in a couple screws on the sides to hold everything nice and tight. To attach the support rails, I just used Craig's Square Drive coated deck screws. They're rated for outdoor use. And between them and the cedar, this thing should hold up pretty great. Boards this long tend to bend. So I did have to use a clamp here or there just to get the support rail aligned nicely to the edge of the bench tops. I've tried a lot of penetrating oils for outdoor use. Honestly, at this point, I haven't seen too much of a difference between brands. So I typically just grab whatever's handy and they all seem to do their job for the most part. 
It's so much easier assembling a short bench top than it is a super long one. Everything just tends to stay much straighter at shorter distances. I don't need any feet for outdoor use, but I want to try moving it around within my studio. So if you want to protect your floors from the rough concrete, I just use anchoring epoxy to glue on some felt pads. And then these 65 pound bases slide nice and easy and don't destroy your floors. Technically the concrete slot is a quarter inch wider than the two pieces of wood. But when you put the pieces in, it's actually a pretty nice snug fit. The longer the bench is, the harder it is to line up each of the concrete pillars perfectly. If you feel that the slot is a little too loose, you can just twist the concrete base just a bit and it'll tighten it up around the wood. Jesse and I took the 20 foot version out to the new house, which we are getting close to finishing, but still have a little bit of a ways to go. We placed the 20 foot long bench top pieces and there's definitely a little bowing in the middle. Now a third support would totally fix this, but I want to see how much stiffer it would get if I just added screws between the two wood pieces. Screwing the pieces together makes the bench faster for setting up and you can use it as a teeter totter or maybe just a bridge over a small creek that just has a single column in the middle. It still bows quite a bit in the center when I'm walking across it, but the cantilever ability at the end is pretty cool. I don't think it'll break. We will test this and show in a future video. And the more people you have on it, the people at the ends start to counteract the bow in the middle. So I actually think the weight of a lot of people will fix that bending curvature, but let's find out. A tension cable going from either end and then through the concrete columns would also reduce the deflection of the wood, but I think that would be more expensive than just adding a third concrete pillar.